Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. Now, we have a story here we've touched on in the past, um, but it's someone else is picking up on the same thing, and it is just blatant grift. Mike Russell, who has just stood down as the president of the SNP, uh, presumably because he knows the SNP will soon be no more, uh, and he will be out of a job, and he rather likes taking all that money uh, from the public purse, rather than having to actually go and work himself. So he's managed to snag himself um, a job, again at public expense, but this time outside of party politics. This is uh, the chairman of the Scottish Land Commission. The nice little part-time role, well paid, doesn't have to do much work. And the thing is, even if the SNP no longer are the uh, party of government, he still keeps his job. Very nice, nice work if you can get it, Michael. Uh, but one has to ask if it's right. And people are asking if it's right, because it should be a non-partisan independent role, not a retirement position for sad old has-been hacks who have failed their party and know that they're about done and want some nice little income in their dotage. Let's have a look to see who else is complaining over the role and what it entails. Here goes. So, concerns raised about former SNP President Michael Russell being appointed to a non-party political taxpayer-funded job. He knows um, his time is near done with the SNP, uh, and rather than sort of retire and let someone else have a go, uh, he wants to go, me, 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 grab, 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 as much of that lovely public money as I can get into my boots. Uh, it's greed, it's sheer greed, isn't it? But it's a bit of grift as well because he shouldn't take the position. He is partisan. He is a party political, very strongly aligned, uh, and it should be an independent position. Uh, and yet you can just know that it was nudge, nudge, job for the boys, tip the wink, make sure he gets this, will you? Maybe a little bit of backsheesh, bit of vaca hander, bit of, you know, bit of money changing, perhaps a little envelope filled with £50 notes. Not saying that has happened, but it wouldn't surprise me. The SNP have got a history of envelopes shoved full of notes. And in no way at all is that in any way connected with any particular lover of the leader of the party at all. That would just be terrible. Uh, the former Scottish Greens MSP, Andy Whiteman, has raised concerns about the potential appointment of former NAT MSP Michael Russell as chairman of the Scottish Land Commission, which is a non-party political post paid for by the, par uh, by the public and for which it is only a part-time role for an ageing old man who can't really cut it any longer in the cut and thrust world of Scottish politics and looks to go and retire with a lot of cash whistled away nicely, allegedly. Concerns have been raised about the potential appointment of a party political figure to a Scottish government role which is meant to be for impartial civil servants. Uh, and of course, Russell is neither impartial nor a civil servant. Former SNP President Michael Russell is bidding to become the chairman of the Scottish Land Commission. And so we want to hope that he doesn't and that he can sail off into retirement and never be seen again. We previously told how the former MSP had stepped down from his party role in order to make a significant contribution to the issue of land reform. That's his way of saying, look, I need this job, blah, blah, blah. Make sure the committee that selects selects me. And if the committee is made up of a majority of SNP, then it will be quite obviously a fix. Grift. And it should be rejected. Uh, anyway, the Nationalist Party even claimed he had been recommended for appointment to the role when it was announced he was leaving. Recommended by whom? Very telling, isn't it? Uh, but the former Scottish Greens MSP, Andy Whiteman, has queried the process which which he would have been told had, to, he had, had he secured the role and whether such an avid SNP man would be unbiased in the role. He said that the initial announcement on December had struck him as very odd. Uh, he said public appointments like this are made after open competition. Imagine you had applied for the post and the first you knew you had not been proposed for appointment was when you read in the media that Michael Russell was lined up for it rather telling don't you think and it is um it's obviously going to be fixed it's obviously just a little sinecure position so that uh, mike russell can get you know carry on off the public for as long as he possibly can god forbid he actually sits and just retires and stops taking public money 
Uh, he says, I do know, sorry, he says, I do not know who briefed the press about this before any official announcement, but it was a clear breach of confidence. For the role of land commissioners, Parliament has to approve the appointment before ministers can appoint. So who leaked this information and why? Because it's all snide. It's all, you know, backhanders, backstreets, lies, jobs for the boys. It's, and it always has been, always will be until you clean up the act. You won't clean up the act because everything in that parliament is sleek, it, snide and secretive. Nobody ever tells the truth. Uh, he later revealed that it was the SNP who had leaked the information in a press release. He said, why was a political party, the party of government, publicising the results of a public appointments process, the result of which has not yet been announced? Where did the SNP get this information from and why did it publicise it? before any official announcement. They're trying to publicise it to make it a fait accompli so that it would be awful. Oh, look, we've already said that this is the case. If this comes out afterwards and it isn't him, it'll look terrible. You must now let it be him. Otherwise, everything will look terrible and we'll all look incompetent. And you don't want that blah, blah, blah and all that bollocks, right? That's the way they're going. But in actual fact, no, tell them. Just, he, he must now resign from it. He must pull himself back and say he cannot take the job. Uh, the Land Reform Post is non-party political and is subject to approval of the Scottish Parliament. MSPs will need to vote through any changes at Holyrood next year. And of course that means with the majority they've got, it will go through if Mike Russell's name is on the ballot. It's a joke, isn't it? It is just sheer backhanded bullshittery just to make sure that some old wanger who served the party well gets to carry on vampiring a parasite on the public purse until eventually he's removed because he's too doddery or drops dead of a heart attack at the age of 103, having bled the people as dry as much as possible. The party is filled with succubus, isn't it? Uh, it is, but it is not a non-partisan post, meaning whoever gets the role will need to work cross-party and not just within the SNP government. And the process needs public scrutiny, as suggested by Mr Whiteman. But it won't be. They won't allow the public to scrutinise it. For heaven's sake, they don't, let, they don't let the public know anything if they can avoid it. He said that when they were already, already approved land commissioners who can all apply to be chair, and that when they were originally appointed, the relevant committee took evidence in public from those nominated. He added, this is not required by law. There is no information yet on whether this will happen again. Parliament will, however, have to vote to approve the candidates. So you've got members of the board already, some of whom have applied to become chairman. Then you've got this guy who's never been on the board applying to become chairman, even though he won't be an expert on the matter and he won't know anything about it. It's going to stink if he does become chairman, isn't it? Rather than uplifting someone who's already been there, served and who knows what's going on. Well, you're just going to parachute in some sad old has-been wanker because he needs the money. It's, it's a joke. Uh, the former MSP then suggested that this appointment comes at a sensitive time due to the commissioner still being relatively new at just over five years old. I think he means the position, not the commissioner. Uh, and this being the first change in membership with a new chairman. He said it was vital that the SLC is trusted as an impartial advisor to ministers. No appointments to date have been party political and they should never be. And then all of a sudden you're going to end up with a Labour, uh, a Labour, part, uh, a Labour uh, Holyrood next time. Uh, but then you still got Mike Russell hanging around like Banquo's ghost. You know, sitting there, and, and it's just, oh, it's just, it's just, it's just typical sleazy, dirty shitiness from this party, isn't it? Uh, just last week, SNP MP John Nicholson claimed he was concerned about links between public appointments to chair, like the likes of the BBC, and the Tories being involved, and also being the UK government. So <laughs> he got the SNP complaining about, oh, putting people in for political persuasion. Meanwhile, they're doing it, and. Mouth firmly feckin' shut, isn't it? Mr Whiteman insisted the impression is rightly or wrongly that the SLC appointment is designed to make life easier for the SNP government, which of course it entirely is. And he included, oh, he concluded, it remains to be seen who the ministers appoint as members, who then as chair, uh, will pick then as the chair. Parliament will debate the appointments in due course, and it's vital that the right person is appointed, and that means it cannot possibly have a sad old has-been that looks like him. Go and retire, you old man. You're 70. Stop sucking from the public teat. I'm coming up. 
Now, I want to stress, I'm not saying that people who hit 70 are no longer any use. I'm not saying that they're no longer capable. I'm not saying that they're no longer valuable. Of course they are. But what I'm saying is, why are you forcing a political appointment into what should be an independent campaign for a man who really, if he's going to resign as the leader of the, uh, uh, sorry, the president of the SNP, because it's all getting a bit too much, why is he being sort of crowbarred into a position for which he's ill-suited, ill-experienced and ill-wanted by the vast majority of people, simply to let him carry on sucking the lifeblood out of the country? Why not let him retire and get someone new, young, and who knows what they're talking about in this position? And that's the hypocrisy of it all. There's other things he can do with his life. Go off, write his memoirs, go travelling, do a lot of things. As long as we don't have to put up with him, it's fine. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we've got another video to come today, probably one more. Uh, but do please hit the subscribe button. We're getting closer. I've noticed we are climbing up and it's nice. Keep hitting them uh, and do like the video. Until next time. Stay safe, stay well, and I will speak to you later. Bye.